Hello, my amazing third grade students. So I have posted for you a video on how to do some paper weaving, but if you do not have materials that you're comfortable using at home, this is another work of art that you can explore that dives into our element of art called space. Not like outer space, but how things can look further or closer to us depending on how we draw them. And this is called an optical illusion. Even though my piece of paper is flat, it still appears as though my shapes on the paper are popping out at me. And I'm going to show you the basics of how to draw an optical illusion today. You can choose between drawing a circle or drawing a shape like a heart. Drawing a circle is quite easy because you can trace the outline of something round to create that shape, but both of them have a very similar technique. I'm going to go ahead and show you the heart today. So the first thing you're going to do is with a piece of paper and a pencil, you're going to want to first draw your big shape. And I'm going to use a marker to begin so that you can see very clearly Okay, so I have drawn the shape on my paper and it's a little squash because I am using a landscape paper, but that's okay. You can use any size or shape of paper you'd like. But then boys and girls, you're gonna need a ruler next. And what I want you to do is take your ruler and you are going to draw a vertical line on your paper. But when you get to your shape, you are going to skip over your shape. And then Go ahead and take your ruler or any kind of straight edge. If you don't have a ruler, use a book or a piece of cardboard. And you're going to, again, draw a line across your paper, skipping the shape. Okay. Now, what I want you to do is fill in your checkered board pattern by creating even sections of lines across and down your paper, starting from that middle line, both horizontally and vertically. So if you have a ruler at home, your ruler may have a line down the middle of your ruler, which can help you to create even sections. Once we have finished the whole background grid, the next thing that we need to be working on is adding the curved lines for the 3D shape. And the way that I go about doing this is I am going to find one of the lines from the grid and I am going to curve it to the other side. I take my ruler and double check that I have the line that's connecting from one side to the other and then I take my marker and I just jump from one side to the other. Do that for all the lines on your heart or shape, one side to the other connecting. I'm gonna do this one as well because it's on this side of the shape. But then once I finish this one, I actually want to turn my paper around because my lines are going to start going the opposite direction. I want my shape to look like it's bulging. So we take our line from this side and curve it to meet on the other side in the opposite direction. And then this one, when I get to this line, it's actually going to follow the contour of the shape. So I don't quite need to do that line. Once I have completed the lines going in this direction, I should turn my paper and go ahead and complete the lines for the horizontal of my shape. Same thing again, when I get to this middle point, I'm gonna go ahead and start curving my lines the opposite direction. And you may get to a point where you need to jump from one side 
to the other. So for this one with the bulbs of the heart, I'm gonna jump my line from here till where it meets the 2D grid again, and then pick back up on that line and do one final jump on the opposite side. Now that I have done the curved lines of my heart grid, I am now ready to color in my grid. And the way that I do this to ensure that I am giving every other square the appropriate color, including when I get inside of my 3D shape, is I start from the corner of my flat grid and I sometimes just tick which squares I need to color in making sure that I'm doing every other square. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the whole entire flat grid before I do anything else. So do everything on your grid, going in diagonals, or skipping every other one to ensure that you've got it. But then what you can do is noticing that this one should be white instead of colored because this one is colored. Just choose one area where you can easily identify that this one is colored, this one is white, then this one right here should be colored. And this is an extension of this column right here. So I automatically know that this one is supposed to be colored in because it fits right here into this column. So that means that if on my heart this one is colored, I know that this one can be colored because it's at a diagonal, and this one can be colored because it's at its diagonal. And then I can continue the pattern quite easily from that point on. Now if you get to a place and you're like, oops, I accidentally made a mistake, what I do is I choose a color that's very similar to the color I used for this one. And sometimes let's say you accidentally colored in this square. Start with your lightest color first, and that's okay. I can just make the other color on my grid a darker color to cover up that accidental mistake. Last thing I'm gonna say before I let you guys keep working on your creation is that when you are coloring, please make sure that you are always coloring in three directions. So I know that this one is supposed to be colored because if I skip a square, this one. Color diagonally with a light pressure, vertically with a medium pressure, and horizontally with a hard pressure or whichever direction that you go, first, second, and third. But coloring in three directions will ensure that you don't see the lines of your colored pencil. Now all I see is a value. This is going to be exceptionally helpful when we start to add darker values around the shape for a shadow. So boys and girls, when I am coloring this shape in here, because I want everything around my heart to be darker, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna color dark starting away from the heart and fading as it goes. Dark and fading. And whatever value I do for these ones, whatever color I do, I will do the exact same thing where I color medium and then I can go back and add more of my shadow darkening those values. Our goal, boys and girls, is to achieve the illusion that our heart is 3D with two ways. The first one is through using our curved versus straight lines. The second way is differing the values around the heart. We want to have a shadow wherever these shapes are versus the shapes that are in the center, which we want to have a highlight on. So vary your pressure that you color for the shapes both on the flat surface around your heart as well as the shapes that are on the very edge of your heart. Okay, boys and girls, if you take this Optical Illusion Challenge, I'm hoping that you can upload them to Art Sonia when you're finished so I can also celebrate with you your awesome accomplishments.